Hello everyone, in this tutorial I'll be showing you a convenient way to run Udo using VS Code. Specifically, we'll be using the debug feature in VS Code. This tutorial assumes that you can already run Udo by running the python udo bin command. In my previous tutorial, I made a walkthrough on how to run Udo using the source installation. First, make sure that you could run the udo bin command without any errors. Following the source install documentation for Udo, we can run the following command. Python Udo bin R for the database user, in my case it's Udo. The password for the database user is also Udo. And the database name, which in my case was Udo Tutorial DB. I'm gonna press enter and we can see that Udo is running. So make sure that you are able to run Udo first before proceeding with this tutorial. Now it's not convenient to keep running Udo in this matter, stopping it, reloading it, especially when you're developing a custom module. So there is a more convenient way and that's using the Python debug. So let me stop Udo and let's proceed with the debug tool. Initially, we don't have a file for debugging and we need to create one. Let's click on create a launch.json file, then Python debugger. Then let's click Python file with arguments. Now I'm gonna clear all the contents and I'm gonna paste the following. I'll have this configuration in the uh, description of this tutorial so you could easily follow through. So first we have the version. You could uh, set it uh, to whatever value you want. Then we have the configuration, the name of this debugger. The type is debug py, which enables VS Code to communicate with your Python application. In our case, Udo. The request is launch. It means that the configuration will start a new debugging session for the specified program, which is Udo. The program should be the path to our Udo bin file, and it is located in the workspace folder dash Udo bin. For the console, we'll be using VS Code's integrated terminal. Now, for the environment here, you need to put your Python path. In my case, I am using a virtual environment that I have created using Venv, and it is located in the workspace folder directory under virtual scripts and the python.exe is located here. Then we have the arguments. R for the database user, it's Udo. W is for the user's password, which is also Udo. Then we have the add-ons path. Now you could have multiple add-ons paths. One for the default add-on folder directory, which is located in the workspace folder add-ons. Next, if you have the enterprise version, it will be in a different directory. For example, in my case, it is under the workspace folder directory enterprise udo and add-ons now in this specific project i don't have udo enterprise version installed so i'm gonna remove this if you will be developing a custom udo module then you will probably need to create a custom add-ons directory and you should include it in the add-ons path argument make sure that the custom module is functioning inside the custom add-ons for this specific project i'm not using any custom add-ons so i'm going to remove this path the d argument is for the database name and in my case it is udo tutorial db with the debug file now ready we are able to run it by clicking the run icon as we can see in the integrated terminal that Udo is running. Let's go to our web browser and see if we are able to open localhost 8069. As you can see, it is working. Now, the convenient thing about this setup is that you could just click on the restart button whenever you have made your changes and it would just restart the script. Now I'm going to stop the script and I'm going to give you a few more beneficial arguments. Another convenient argument is the U argument, which stands for update. You could use this argument to update your custom module. This is equivalent of going inside Udo's UI user interface and clicking the update app list. So if you are developing a custom module that you are constantly changing, put the module name over here and each time you run the debugger, it will update the module. Another convenient argument is the dash dash dev XML argument. With this argument, if you are updating any XML files, you do not even need to restart Udo. Just refresh the page and you will see your changes. Now, I do not have any custom modules installed for this specific project, so let me just use one of the existing Udo modules. For example, the website module. 
I'm gonna type the website module here. I'm gonna run our debugger and we can see that Udo is running and it has updated one module which we have added it as an update argument. That's it for this short tutorial and I'll have the debug configuration files content in the description. Thank you for watching.